capital of Australia's island state of Tasmania. This small vibrant city has been the last stop for Australian and international Antarctic adventurers and researchers for over a century. It was from here on the 8th of March 1912 that Norwegian Roald Amundsen announced to the world that he and his party had reached the South Pole on the 17th of January 1912. The first Antarctic explorers to achieve that amazing feat of endurance. Over the decades, the links between Tasmania and the Antarctic have strengthened. Hobart is now home to an amazing alumni of Antarctic adventurers, scientists and suppliers to those heading south. Many of those are a part of the Tasmanian Polar Network, a group of dedicated Antarctic professionals. Frederica Olivia is one of those dedicated professionals. Depending on the calling, Frederic could be either scientist, adventurer or documentary filmmaker. This time I'm working as a voyage manager for the Australian Antarctic Division on board the Aurora Australis. We will be taking supplies and personnel to two Australian bases, Mawson and Davis. And whilst on the way, we will also be doing some marine science. And once we're there, we will um, pick up a bunch of summer personnel and some winter personnel, and uh, also some scientists who've been uh, collecting data over the summer. Frederic is an Antarctic veteran. With five seasons on the Antarctic mainland working as a scientist, seven trips as a camera person, and over 20 as voyage manager and logistics coordinator. Antarctica is very exciting, not only because of its remoteness or its beauty, but especially because it's a very challenging environment to work in. It's forever changing and everything down there is big forces, big storms, big winds. Things that humans who are not meant to be down there have to overcome to achieve their goals or their programs. And in that sense, it's a very rewarding place to work. I've been going down there for 18 seasons now and even visiting the same places like our stations, Mawson or Davis, exactly uh, every time it's different. And that's what really gets me excited as a challenge. Among Frederic's scientific colleagues in the Antarctic alumni in Tasmania is Antarctic applied ecologist Dana Bergstrom. I've been a regular expeditioner to Antarctica over the last 20 years as I travel south with the Australian Antarctic Division as a scientist working on the protection of Antarctic ecosystems. Uh, my work looks at things such as developing biosecurity protocols and the impact of climate change on Antarctic ecosystems. I have the best of both worlds working in Antarctica and then travelling home to Hobart where there's a very strong polar community. The polar community grows organically year on year in Hobart. Australian and international students, the world's next generation of marine and Antarctic scientists, embark on related research projects at the University of Tasmania's Institute of Marine and Antarctic Studies. PhD candidate Mao Mori from Japan is a part of the international contingent at IMAS. I decided to study ecosystem modeling in the Southern Ocean in IMAS because IMAS has many Antarctic scientists in various fields and IMAS has strong collaboration with them, not only local but also around the world. It provides me enthusiastic and also exciting PhD life in Hobart. The scientists are in good hands on the voyages to Antarctica. The Aurora Australis is captain. Jerry O'Doherty has seen the best and worst of the Southern Ocean. I've been doing this for 18 years now and uh, over that time I've probably undertaken about 50 voyages to Antarctica, all parts of Antarctica. This voyage to Mawson, uh, it's a, about a 10, uh, 10 to 12 day passage on a six week expedition. And uh, when we finish this expedition, we'll return to Hobart, which is a great port to come home to, and it's a, uh, and it's a great port to operate out of as well. 
All Antarctic voyages, flights and weather-dependent activities on the continent rely heavily on advanced and accurate weather information. Authoring that vital information from Hobart is Scott Carpentier, Manager Antarctic Meteorology. Here at the Bureau of Meteorology in Hobart, we support all facets of the Australian Antarctic program. From the ship, the Aurora Australis, when it leaves Hobart on its way to the icy continent across the wild southern ocean, we provide them with daily weather forecasts and, uh, and ocean information. Once the ship reaches the continent at one of the stations, we'll provide them advice on the, the weather conditions that may affect their operations as they transit to shore. Uh, once they board aircraft, uh, if they need to fly to remote field camps or to another station. We also provide advice uh, just for a carpenter who might need to um, do some uh, work on top of a building. Hobart claims the status of scientific capital for Antarctica. Here there are more scientists per capita than any other Australian capital, with many being involved in Antarctic and Southern Ocean studies. Australia's leading research body, the CSIRO, is a world-respected contributor to polar research. At CSIRO we are committed to working with our partners in Hobart and around Australia to learn more about Antarctica and the Southern Ocean. Our research focus is on the global climate system and the central role that the Southern Ocean and Antarctica play in driving change. At CSIRO, we also manage the research vessel investigator, a critical piece of marine infrastructure that allows scientists from Hobart and around the polar research network to get down to Antarctica, make observations, and learn more about this crucial region. At CSIRO, we employ more than 300 people here in Hobart, and we're proud to underpin Hobart's reputation as an Antarctic gateway city. Also operating out of Hobart, the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, established by International Convention in 1982, with the objective of conserving Antarctic marine life. The Tasmanian Government, too, has a dedicated Antarctic and Southern Ocean policy. The State Government is committed to making Tasmania a key Antarctic gateway and a world-class centre of excellence. Tasmania has developed an unparalleled offering in appropriate infrastructure and technical expertise in Antarctica. We have a private sector capability that extends from engineering support to logistics management right to voyage providoring. The Tasmanian and Australian governments have both invested in infrastructure to ensure efficient and seamless connections between Hobart and the Antarctic. TASPORTS is responsible for managing and operating the Port of Hobart where Australia's Antarctic program is based. The Port of Hobart is Australia's gateway to the Antarctic and each year welcomes a number of international Antarctic programs. Guided by the TASPORTS Port Master Plan, we remain committed to ensuring the Port of Hobart remains the gateway to the Southern Ocean and continues to support world-class exploration and scientific research into the future. The Hobart International Airport, with a 2,750 metre runway, is the home base for regular summer season flights to a blue ice runway at Wilkins Aerodrome near Casey Station. Also exclusively available through the conveniently located Port of Hobart's Selfs Point Wharf Fuel Depot, that vital ingredient for journeys south, the special Antarctic blend of diesel fuel. Tasmania's private sector Antarctic service capability includes an impressive list of innovative problem-solving engineering companies. Angle Composites has got the manufacturing and the engineering capability to produce igloos, building panels, traverse caravans for use in the Antarctic environment. We design and manufacture sleds, trailers, some specialised transport equipment as well, plus some um, carriers for their traverse caravans. We also build building support structures and safety railing. 1985 was the first trailer we built for the Australian Antarctic people. And in 1993, we um, started work 
with uh, the French and the Italians. Um, that's when we got into building um, trailers on rubber tracks. I guess we've grown from there to uh, our present day um, products. William Adams um, is a Caterpillar dealer here in Tasmania. We've had an association with the Antarctic since 1956. We've been taking stock standard Caterpillar machines and modifying them for the Antarctic conditions. This tractor behind me is a Challenger tractor. It is uh, used for traverse operations in Antarctica. Tows sleds and fuel and supplies from the Antarctic coast right through to inland and they probably travel about a thousand kilometres. They arrive at a base called Dome C where they supply the expeditioners and scientists for the winter. Tasmanian Shipping Supplies have been supplying uh, provisions and stores to the um, Antarctic stations for over 25 years. Um, our range of produce includes fresh, frozen and dry stores that the uh, stations need in their, in their operations. Numerous occasions we've looked after uh, programs from other Antarctic nations including the Koreans, the Chinese and Italians. My business is an Antarctic engineering business and uh, I basically uh, provide solutions for my Antarctic customers. These two Antarctic uh, Traverse uh, accommodation modules are an example of the type of work that I do and uh, it utilises the many skills of, of the businesses here in Tasmania. So with the combined commitment of government and the private sector, Tasmania is focused on growing its involvement in and support for Antarctic and Southern Ocean research. If you would like to know more about Tasmania's Antarctic and Southern Ocean sector, contact the Tasmanian Polar Network at www.tasmanianpolarnetwork.com.au